Okay guys, welcome back to Daddy and the Don. Today we're here to preview Crystal Palace vs Everton. My guest today is my co-host, Phil the Daddy Highgate. So Phil, first off, um, Palace's recent form after looking really good, a couple of really good results, we've lost three in a round now. Is there a little bit of panic setting in or do you think this is the perfect game to stop the stop the rot and uh, get a much needed w victory? Yeah, obviously it's not good losing three games on the bounce in the fashion some of the games were lost. Like uh, the Leeds one was a bit hard to take, last minute VAR penalty. Um, obviously it was a penalty, but it's just the timing of the thing sours it a little bit. Um, yeah, the performances haven't been that bad really. It's um, probably looks a bit worse than it is on paper. Two of them were away, all against decent teams. So getting zero points wasn't the end of the world, but obviously you want to get something from these games. And looking at it, like we played okay, but one thing I would point out, like you questioned a while ago um, when we were having another Palace video, that why is um, James MacArthur still playing? And obviously since the Wolves game, which was our last win, when he got injured just towards the end of the game. So he hasn't played since, and we've drawn three all with Burnley and then lost the next three games. So... Like I said in that video, um, nothing you can see there to say that, oh, he's a starter, but Patrick must see something in him and there must be something he's doing. Maybe it's just like discipline, shape, um, positioning that just enables the rest of the team to do their thing. That At the moment, that's not actually being allowed to happen. So I think, like just going back to the main point, we are playing OK. I think it's just about finding that right balance, especially with MacArthur out injured. So moving on to the game itself against Everton. Uh, they just come off a first victory in, in, a, in, a, in a long time against Arsenal. Um, do you think that will will be bad news for you or do you think regardless how the result went you would still expect to get something from it or are you now worried that they're going to go on a bit of a run? You know, they have good players and uh, what player in particular would worry you uh, if they are going to exploit you? So yeah, Everton, um, quick fact here for you. So we haven't actually beaten Everton for eight years. We had um, Millie Jedernak and Fraser Campbell playing for us the last time we actually beat them, 3-2 away, um, 2014, the year we got promoted. Lukaku was at Everton, he scored on that day as well. So obviously that's just alarm bells ringing there that we don't seem to get anything out of these Everton games. There's been quite a few draws, but Everton always seem to have their way with us, so... We're going to have to really be on it and find a way to turn the tide there. And in terms of a player to watch, obviously ricarlison has been in a bit of form. I um, had a goal against Arsenal the other night and a couple ruled out for offside, but he's been scoring and he's scored a couple of times against us in recent visits. So I think with the players they've got out, he'll be the one that would be looking to cause problems. And it'd also be silly to ignore Damari Gray. He's had a great start to life at Everton, so I'm sure he'll be a handful as well. How do you think uh, Palace will set up for this game? Um, do you think he needs to make a few changes? Uh, two losses in a row. I think he played the same team both times. Do you think it's now time to start Eze? Uh, maybe put Will Hughes in the midfield? Maybe maybe, maybe change the system? What, how do you think... Pat's going to set up. Surely changes will be made personnel-wise and do you think he might change the formation as well? Yeah, I don't think he should mess about with the formation and tactics too much, but definitely he could freshen it up, um, especially with the Christmas fixtures coming up. They're going to be coming in thick and fast, so players are obviously going to get tired. But So I think just keeping the players fresh and rested and at their best is probably the best thing to do right now. Because obviously it's all well just playing your best 11 all the time, but they're going to get run into the ground and obviously you end up losing silly games. It's all about squad rotation this time of year. And I think he does need to have a serious think about bringing in different players just for the short weeks where you've got midweek games. Before we get to how I think the game will go, I think a key battle for this game is going to be Sahar versus Coleman. Do you think Sahar's got the beating of Coleman? He's an older fullback. If you can get the balls of Sahar, will that give you a lot of success that can hopefully contribute for you getting, well, a great result. Yeah, look, Seamus Coleman, he's uh, been one of the better sort of right-backs over the last 10 years in the Premier League. Obviously, he had um, a couple of nasty injuries, lost to 
bit of playing time there. Got a bit older, probably lost a bit of pace. So I think, yeah, he is an area where Zaha can exploit and probably will be able to get the better of him. But he is a very experienced right back and does know what he's doing. But I think the same could be said on the other side of the park. So Demarai Gray normally lines up on the left and Joel Wood should be back from suspension there. So I think that's going to be another interesting game because he's been playing very well as well. So as much as Wilfred can exploit their right back, I think Demarai Gray... Um, would be a danger man as well. So um, Joel Ward will have to be on his game too. And finally, Phil, how do you think this game is going to play out? How do you think both teams are going to set their stall? Is this going to be a good game? Who do you think is going to come out on top? And what's your score prediction? I think both teams are going to take a cautious approach to the start of the game, try to feel each other out. But hopefully, once a few tackles go in, it will liven up and get a bit more free-flowing. Uh, might be a bit similar to the recent Brentford Everton game where Brentford got the goal in the first half and then had to defend for large portions of the game. So if we do take the lead, I could see the same sort of thing happening there. But at the same time, we could be a goal down ourselves early and then have to press. But like I said, I think it'll be a cagey start and it will liven up after after maybe the first 20 minutes. So yeah, given the form both teams are in, I'm going to go for a one-all draw in this game. And I think the wait for a win over Everton is going to go on to nine years. So Crystal Palace won, Everton won, both teams get a point, move on to the next game.